ஓம் சாந்தி 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 ஓம் வசுதேவசுதந்தேவம் கம்சாணூரமர்தனம் தேவகி பரமானந்தம் கிருஷ்ணம் வந்தே ஜகத்குரும் அசோமாசமய தமசோமாஜோதமய பிரத்தியோர்மாமயம் Let us offer our salutations to Lord Krishna, the son of Vasudeva Devaki, the bliss of Devaki, the spiritual preceptor of the mankind. Let us pray to him to lead us from the unreal to the real. to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality we have been studying the yoga of wisdom verse number 42 yami mam pushpitam vacham pravadantya vipaschitaha வேத வாதரதாக பார்த்த நான் தஸ்தீதி வாதினா அர்ஜுன் தோஸ் ஹூ ஆர் நான் டிஸ்கிரிமினேட்டிங் ஹூ ஆர் ஃபேசினேட்டட் பை தி கர்மகாண்ட் ஆஃப் தி வேதர்ஸ் ஹூ ஆர் கிவ் தட் தேர் இஸ் நத்திங் அதர் தேன் திஸ் அட்டர் தீஸ் ஃப்ளவரி வேர்ட்ஸ் காமாத்மானா ஸ்வர்க்கபரா ஜன்ம கர்ம பலப்பிரதாம் கிரியா விசேஷ பகுலாம் பொகேஸ்வரிய கதிம் பிரதி பர்சன்ஸ் ஹூஸ் மைண்ட்ஸ் ஆர் ஃபுல் ஆஃப் டிசையர்ஸ் வித் ஹெவன் ஆஸ் தி ஹையஸ்ட் கோல் அட்ரத் தீஸ் ஃப்ளவரி வேர்ட்ஸ் அபவுட் மெனி ஸ்பிரிட் ஸ்பெஷல் ரிச்சுவல் ரீடிங் டு பெட்டர் பர்த் ஃபார் த அட்டைன்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் பிளஷர் அண்ட் பவர் this called bhogeshwarya so people generally seek pleasures and powers so they are constantly in samsar in order to fulfill the desires they keep on coming on this earth planet to work out their desires bhogeshwarya prasaktanam tayapa hrata chetasam vyavsaya atmaka buddhihi samadhau na vidhiyate for those who pursue power and pleasure exclusively whose minds have been robbed of discrimination by those flowery words well ascertained understanding that is vyavsaya atmaka buddhi doesn't take place in their minds vedas contain both karma kand and gyana kand there are certain people who study vedas but get hooked on to the karma kand portion only they are not interested in the gyana kand or vedanta at all although Vedanta is also an important part of the Vedas. This Jnanakanda is very important. The only focus on the Karmakanda. People get fascinated by the rituals enjoined in the Karmakanda for the results they produce in samsara. Their mind do not go beyond that. lacking in discrimination as they are these persons cannot distinguish between what is important and what is not even after studying the vedas they are confused and are deeply attached to bhogeshwarya bhoga is pleasure 
and aishwarya is power over lordship you can see observe the people in the world how they behave each one projects his ego so much to show up their deep attachment to pleasures and power these persons swear by the ritualistic portions of the vedas and argue that if vedas themselves recommend rituals for gaining bhogeshwarya what is wrong in seeking bhogeshwarya these people argue that actions which get them bhogeshwarya are the only important actions and therefore they are totally committed to those vedic rituals which promise such pleasures they also argue there is no goal higher than heaven reaching heaven is a very important objective on their agenda as important to them as worldly power and pleasures are when they are alive for such people moksha means merely gaining heaven after death these are the persons whose minds are full of desires kamatmana they have many many desires to be fulfilled when they are alive after that they have desires for heaven for them there is no place like heaven and the possibility of not being able to get there torment their mind a great deal they also seek better birth jnana karma phala pradam in the next life they wish to be born in a rich and regal environment they have no interest in life other than bhogeshwarya heaven and better birth for instance they have no interest in the atman and atma gyanam their minds are completely robbed of discrimination so these persons who lack discrimination tell you with a missionary zeal how one can get to heaven and how one can be born in a royal family like the british monarchy or in the family of billionaire by performing certain rules given in the karma kanda of the vedas so their mind is totally focused on the pleasures their mind go their mind do not go beyond that they always think they are born to enjoy the life so one must get into life of pleasures and enjoy the life fully in the youth stage let us not worry about spiritual team this is not a time when all the pleasures are over then we shall think of spiritual ideas which can never happen for most people it is very pleasant to hear about comfort and luxury in life they are delighted by all actions that get them worldly power and worldly pleasures for instance when someone talks of how comfortable and present the life is in usa people who do not reside in usa find it very enchanting their minds get carried away when they hear about such things more so when they are couched in flowery words the persons who are obsessed by bhogeshwarya heaven and better birth revel in the relevant veda vakyas veda vadrataha these people constantly talk about their beliefs and their commitment to such beliefs in flowery words pushpitam vacham they tell you and frequently quote the relevant passages from the vedas in support of the vedic rituals of interest to them they also try to convince all others with flowery words that there is nothing more life 
nothing more to life other than the rituals that they espouse being obsessed by these rituals these persons talk of nothing else philosophy doesn't appeal to them knowledge about the self doesn't appeal to them they are not bothered about such things when the mind is obsessed by such fancies it gets absorbed it gets robbed of its discrimination and it tends to spread out it cannot focus these people fully understand what are dharma artha and kama and pursue them with a single minded devotion for them moksha means attaining heaven and with this confused understanding they get exceedingly interested in it also dharma artha and kama are results in samsara whereas moksha gives liberation from samsara one requires a measure of discrimination to be able to regard liberation from samsara as a right goal in life and discrimination in those persons is conspicuous by its absence lacking discrimination they only have a confused understanding of their priorities in life most of the people think that their priority in life should be how they can become very rich and attain high position in the society they solve their priority they don't want to think about the reality governing the man's destiny vyavsayatmika buddhi means a well ascertained understanding of priorities veda vadarataha do not have vyavsayatmika buddhi they are confused about what they should be seeking in life they have too many things on their plate priorities become a problem when there are too many things to be accomplished and enjoyed the buddhi of such persons spreads out into many branches their minds minder the vyavsayatmika buddhi cannot take place in the minds which mender vyavsayatmika buddhi has been samadho na vidyate verse number 45 traigunya vishaya veda nistraigunyo bhava arjuna nidvandvo nitya satvastho niryoga kshema atmavan arjun the karma kand of vedas is related to the three gunas of maya transcending the gunas having no desires being free from the sway of the opposites be always established in sattva be unconcerned about your yoga kshema and be the master of yourself vedas contain in addition to karma kanda the vedanta also but the persons who lack discrimination are interested only in the karma kanda which reveals a variety of rituals all of which promise bhoga and aishwarya bhoga and aishwarya results in samsara they are the products of the three gunas of maya three gunya vishaya arjun wanted shreyas which in the context of the gita is moksha moksha releases one from samsara whereas the desire for bhoga and aishwarya perpetuates samsara they are mutually exclusive the lord wants arjun to transcend the three gunas he should give up the desire for bhoga and aishwarya then only it becomes meaningful to seek moksha cold and heat victory and gain profit and loss honor and dishonor are examples of opposites opposites are the causes of sukha and dukha cold and heat for example can make you happy or unhappy if you allow them to do that then you depend on their presence or absence for your happiness similarly there is pain in defeat and elation in victory and so forth you encounter the opposites all the time all through your life it is not possible to avoid them at all what you should do however 
is to try not to come under their spell you should try to maintain composure in the midst of opposites nidvandva bhava this composure can be gained through the sattva gun when sattva is predominant there is composure discrimination knowledge etc when your commitment is only to knowledge nitya sattva sthava bhava you can discover yourself to be above the gunas nistray gunya yoga is to acquire what you do not have kshema is to protect what you already have yoga kshema is your primary drive in life the concern for yoga kshema encompasses all your egocentric activities and the concern for yoga kshema is big problem in every life the lord advises arjun here to become free from the concern for yoga kshema one can certainly work for his yoga kshema there is nothing wrong in working for one's yoga kshema per se but you must realize that inputs alone are in, are in your control the result is given by the lord you have no control over it if you can cheerfully accept therefore whatever result that comes to you as prasad from the lord you would gain composure this is the attitude of karma yog in other words the lord is advising arjun indirectly to cultivate the attitude of karma yog atmavan he is a person whose faculties are always with him he has his mind and senses always with him they are with him he is not with them he always holds the reins in his hands he is a master of his senses and mind mastering senses and the mind gives composure arjun was disturbed and distressed at the prospect of killing bhishma drona and others the lord wants arjun to cool down when you are emotionally distraught your thinking and understanding would be below optimum but the task ahead for arjun demands all his faculties to be together and alert therefore the lord wants arjun to become an atmavan <coughs> यावानर्थ उदपाने सर्वत संप्लुतोदके तावान सर्वेशु वेदेशु ब्राह्मणस्य विजानतः फॉर द ब्राह्मण हु हैज डिस्क्रिमिनेशन हु इज अ ज्ञानी द यूज ऑफ द कर्मकांड ऑफ द वेदास इज दैट मच यूज एज आर द पॉल्ट्री एंड टाइनी पॉइंट्स व्हेन ऑल अराउंड देम इज फ्लडेड विद वाटर द रिचुअल्स डिस्क्राइब्ड इन द कर्मकांड ऑफ द वेदास प्रोड्यूस रिजल्ट्स ओनली इन संसार these are kamya karmas that return to you that return you to samsara and its sorrows again and again repeatedly the vedavadartas believes in these vivedic rituals they believe that when they perform these rituals with shraddha they would reap the worldly happiness they seek so ardently a brahman is a wise person who is endowed with discrimination he is very clear in his mind about what he wants he too seeks happiness but a different kind of happiness a happiness that is eternal and absolute he knows that the outside world doesn't have the ingredients of the happiness that he seeks he also knows what karmas return you to samsara and what karmas release you from samsara he is not interested in worldly and heavenly happiness is interested in moksha only the wise person knows that he is the self who is brahman brahman is sachidananda ananda is the very nature of brahman when you are the absolute ananda yourself why would you look for any other paltry source of ananda therefore he is not interested in the vedic rituals for such a person vedic rituals and their limited results are as much used as the water in the submerged ponds and wells when the entire countryside is flooded with potable rain water why would one search for the submerged ponds and wells for getting water when he is surrounded by fresh drinking water everywhere the worldly and even heavenly happiness promised by the vedas become completely irrelevant and get drowned in the supreme bliss associated with brahman कर्मण्येवाधिकारस्ते मा फलेशु कदाचन 
మా కర్మ ఫలహేతుర్ భూమాతే సంగోస్త్వ కర్మణి ద ఆత్మజ్ఞాని ద పర్సన్ హూ హాస్ రియలైజ్ ద ఆత్మన్ హాస్ నో మోర్ యూస్ ఫర్ వాట్ ఈస్ సెట్ ఇన్ స్క్రిప్చర్స్ ఈవెన్ ఇఫ్ దే ఆర్ వేదస్ హీ నోస్ దట్ ఈస్ ఇ సెల్ఫ్ హూ క్రియేటెడ్ ది వేదస్ హీ హాస్ నో మోర్ యూస్ ఫర్ ది మీన్స్ హీ ఆల్రెడీ అటైన్ ది ఎండ్ ది చాయిస్ టు యూ ఈస్ అన్ యాక్షన్ ఓన్లీ but never ever to the fruits thereof do not become the cause of the results of actions may you never have any attachment to inaction in this materialistic world we are taught right from childhood that one should have ambitions in life and pursue them with a single minded perseverance in the present day society selfish action is admired and selfless action is pitied we never do anything if it does not profit us in some way everything that we do must advance some worldly objective or the other for us disinterested action is generally considered wasteful this is what all the management books proclaim this is what the success oriented society preaches and practices we want results and we constantly work for the achievement when we constantly focus on the outcome or the lack of it we get worked up over it when the mind is in turmoil it cannot concentrate on any task properly the worry and anxiety invested in the present moments transforms into fear of the future tomorrow is only a continuation of today just as today is a continuation of yesterday what we invest in the present will decide how prosperous we are going to be in the future any action today defines the fruit of this action tomorrow when we waste the precious present moments in imaginary fears for tomorrow we do not invest in the present moments efficiently on the other hand If you focus your entire store of energy in the present moments and concentrate exclusively on what you do you give an inspired input excellence in input ensures excellence in output a single minded devotion to work will always end up in a brilliant success besides giving job satisfaction if it is success that you want then do not strive with they are mind ridden with anxiety and fear for the outcome even in this materialistic world focusing on the input exclusively with no thought of the output as in karma yoga is very essential for success the lord says here you have a choice in action but never in its results ma phaleshu kadachan the result is determined by me not krishna says this does not mean that one should perform every action without expecting a result no one performs any action without expecting a result when one undertakes to do something he expects a result even though he knows that he has no control over the result this expectation of a result which is quite natural is not a problem the problem comes only when you get the att- when you get attached to the result the word adhikara actually means the right the right to choose a particular option out of several options available to you here adhikara therefore means choice you can decide what work you want to do and how you propose to do it that's your right you are not unfortunately in a position to choose the result that you want you are helpless with reference to the result the result is decided in accordance with the law of cause and effect this law was not authored by anyone here it is ishvara's law he alone decides the result of every action in the world you are just an individual with limited knowledge with limited power and ever so many desires your countless likes and dislikes to be fulfilled all karmas you do are meant for fulfilling your ragadvesh commonly called desires 
that you want is kama desire what you want is defined in terms of either raga or dvesha raga dvesha alone decide your actions all karmas are undertaken to produce the desired results since you perform a particular karma to produce a specific result it appears that you have figured out which karma would produce which result if you are thinking a person you would very soon find out that what you figured out is not really as predictable as you thought it is what you want is one thing and what you get is not exactly what you wanted frequently it is quite the opposite and you are helpless about this your power and knowledge are limited there is a status of the jiva you do have a choice but only over the action you have none over the result you perform the karma and the result is taken care of if you had power over the result then every one of your karmas would have been successful but because you are not omniscient you do not know that a certain karma would produce a given result what is the result would depend on so many unknown factors since you do not have choice over the result you should recognize this limitation this is the limitation in knowledge and power all human beings have the same kind of limitation the lord says do not be the cause of the result of the action ma karma phaleshu ma karma phalehetu bhuhu because you are not do not be the cause of the result of the action because you are not you are the cause of the karma only but you are not the cause of the result thereof you are the author of the actions only but you are not the author of the results of those actions given this fact the most appropriate thing for you is to take with an even attitude whatever result that comes to you this is karma yoga karma yoga implies the acceptance of ishwar unless you accept ishwar there is no karma yoga all results are taken care of by a certain law which you may call the law of dharma or the law of karma whatever is the law that governs the karma and its results is the law of karma whoever created this world also created this law of karma brahman created this world brahman is ishwar the lord the world is not separate from ishwar the laws are also his creation the laws are also not separate from ishwar hence the laws are ishwar you have free will and you can do whatever you want to do but the result is shaped by the law that is ishwar therefore you accept ishwar first and then you also accept him again as the karma phala dhata when you do that you have the attitude of a devotee ya bhakta as a bhakta you continuously confront ishwar as you keep receiving the karma phal since every result comes from ishwar you take it as prasad a blessing a gift from ishwar when you view everything that happens to you as prasad you have nothing to complain prasad never binds results which are not accepted as prasad bind they bind you to karma and janma arjun may well say now if i have no control over the results of my actions why should i not renounce action retreat to a forest and spend all my time in meditation which is what i proposed a few minutes ago the fact that you have no control over the fruits of your action however should not make you frustrated and stop all action one should not renounce action out of frustration or fear when you are afraid of something and you are run away from it then you yield it to the immensity of the problem when you run away from anything out of fear it means that you still have raga dvesh when you have raga dvesha still in your mind you cannot give up action you should not you should not renounce action unless your mind is ready for it when one gives up action out of fear it is not sanyas it becomes dereliction of duty you just do not like an action and you want to escape from it this is what the lord refers here as in action attachment to inaction is neither possible nor good how can you live in this world without performing some action action is inescapable however neglecting to do what you have to do attracts sin yogastha kuru karmani sangantyaktva dhananjaya 
ಸಿದ್ಧ ಸಿದ್ಧೋ ಸಮೂತ್ವ ಸಮತ್ವ ಯೋಗ ಉಚ್ಯತೆ ಅರ್ಜುನ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಫಾಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಯೋಗ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ವ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಲೈಕ್ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೇಲ್ಯೂರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈವನ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಯೋಗ ಅರ್ಜುನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಟು ಫೈಟ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟು ಫೈಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ If Arjun fights this war, he will be forced to kill Bhishma Drona and his cousins. If he retreats from the battlefield, he saves the lives of Bhishma Drona and his cousins, no doubt, but he loses his reputation which he built up painstakingly over the years. All the pain and sorrow that Arjun has been experiencing is because he is unable to accept either of the two possible outcomes, victory or defeat, each having a problem attached to it. His agony ends, however, if he views the war as his duty, which he should perform without concern for victory or defeat. The Lord therefore says, Arjun, Ragadveshas which are behind all Kamya Karmas cause attachment to the results of action. This attachment to the outcome of the action is what is causing agony to you presently. You cannot get rid of your agony unless you get rid of your attachment to those results. you cannot get rid of the attachment unless you eliminate your ragadveshas first ragadveshas likes and dislikes would go away only if you perform karma with a proper attitude this proper attitude is a prayerful attitude known as karma yoga yogastha means abiding in yoga here yoga means karma yoga the karma yogi is a mumukshu a mumukshu is one who wants moksha the karma yogi wants moksha liberation absolute freedom therefore he performs all karma as a yoga in other words he performs all karma as an offering to ishwar which is ishwara prana buddhi the karma yogi also believes that all results of karma are given by ishwar in accordance with the law of karma which he created therefore he cheerfully accepts he cheerfully accepts every result that comes to him as prasad from ishwara which is prasad buddhi the lord continues when you start performing all karma as a yoga in the beginning you would encounter several road blocks don't get discouraged by them persevere with vyavsayatmaka buddhi and become steadfast in yoga with time you would be able to purify your mind of all ragadveshas and gain the evenness of mind with the advent of evenness of mind you would stop viewing this battle in terms of victory and defeat evenness of mind is karma yoga durena khyavaram karma buddhi yoga dhananjaya buddhau sharana manvichcha kripanaha palahetavaha arjun kama karma is very much inferior indeed to that performed with proper attitude therefore seek refuge in the proper attitude those who perform karma for its fruits are misers their motivated actions are called kamya karmas kamya karmas produce results in samsara almost all our actions are motivated by desires we are happy when we get the desired result unhappy otherwise we do not know in advance what practice input is in indeed needed for the desired result we give input and hope that it is the right input invariably it's a shot in the dark which misses its target every action gets a result that it deserves but most of us are not aware of this truth therefore we do not get the desired results from our actions we feel frustrated and miserable here the problem lies actually not in our actions or in the results rather it lies in our reaction to the results however when you perform all karma with a prayerful attitude and accept cheerfully every result that you get as prasad from the lord you gain an evenness of mind which is the attitude of karma yoga in karma yoga we perform all karma with ishwarapna buddhi and accept all results with prasad buddhi the attitude of karma yoga is the proper attitude for performing karma because it neutralizes the likes and dislikes eliminates ragadveshas as long as ragadvesha prompt your actions it is not possible for you to gain that evenness of mind when you gain the evenness of mind you raise above sorrow and happiness 
Kama karma returns you to samsara and its sorrows. Karma performed with the attitude of karma yoga neutralizes likes and dislikes and gives antakkarana shuddhi which in turn leads to moksha. Clearly therefore, kama karma is inferior to karma performed with the proper attitude of karma yoga. This is the reason why the Lord asked Arjun to take refuge in karma yoga buddhi and perform karma as a duty and not for its results. He wants Arjun to fight with the attitude of karma yoga, treating victory and defeat alike. Misers are those who have money but do not have the heart to spend it either on themselves or on others. On this analogy, those who have buddhi but do not use it are called misers. Of all the Lord's creatures, of all the Lord's creatures, human beings alone are endowed with buddhi, which is a discriminatory capacity. This is the greatest wealth one can have. It is given to the human beings so that by making proper use of it, they can gain self-knowledge. If one doesn't make proper use of this wealth, he is called a miser. People who perform karma for its results are misers because they do not make proper use of their buddhi. If they make proper use of their buddhi, they would immediately come to know that karma performed for its results returns one to samsara and its sorrow and therefore they would perform all karma with the attitude of karma yoga which enables them to get liberation from samsara and its sorrows. Misers seek trivial, trivial results. Karma yogis and sannyasis seek moksha which is a profound result. Arjun wanted shreyas which in the context of Bhagavad Gita is moksha. For gaining moksha the Lord advises Arjun to take refuge in Karma Yoga Buddhi. Buddhi yukto jahati ha ubhe sukata duskrite tasman yoga yujjasva yoga ha karmasu kaushalam. One endowed with evenness of mind can get rid of both punyam and papam in this world itself. Therefore, commit yourself to Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga is discretion in action. A Buddhi yukta is one who is committed to the life of karma yoga. He has the buddhi or the attitude of karma yoga. Karma when performed for the sake of self-purification and not for the sake of results in samsara becomes a yoga. The karma yogi performs karma as an offering to Ishwar and accepts cheerfully every result that comes to him no matter what it is as prasad, a blessing from the Lord. This attitude to karma and its results neutralizes the ragad dveshas and brings anyoneness of mind. This evenness of mind is only with reference to the results of action and not with reference to the action itself. Elimination of Raghat Dvesha is also known as Antakkarna Shuddhi. The ultimate goal of the Karma Yogi is Moksha and not Antakkarna Shuddhi. Antakkarna Shuddhi is an intermediate goal. Without Antakkarna Shuddhi, however, Moksha cannot happen. Arjun wanted Shayas which is Moksha, but Arjun had Raghat Dvesha and therefore he cannot gain Moksha unless he eliminated Raghat Veshas first and gained Antakarna Shuddhi. For gaining Antakarna Shuddhi, Arjun has to commit himself to Karma Yoga. He has no other option right now. Unlike the Sanyasi, who is a Jnani, the Karma Yogi has doership. Whoever has doership has to gain knowledge to shed his doership. To gain knowledge, one whose mind has Raghat Vesh has to perform Karma as a Yoga and eliminate his Raghat Vesh. Although a choice between Karma Yoga and Sannyasi is a theoretical possibility for Arjun, right now he is qualified only for Karma Yoga and not for Sannyas because he still has Ragadvesha in his mind, which needed to be eliminated before he becomes qualified for Sannyas. The Karma Yogi is a holy person of exemplary self-control. He gives up many things to gain mastery over his senses and mind, but he cannot give up doership. When you have doership, you cannot escape the results. Therefore, the Karma Yogi keeps acc accumulating Punyam and Papam. Very soon, after gaining Antakkarna Shuddhi, however, the Karma Yogi also gains the knowledge of the Self. This knowledge is gained only when the mind is purified. Mind becomes purified only when all the Ragad Vesas are eliminated. With the advent of the knowledge, the Jiva discovers 
that he is the brahman and gets liberated from karma and janma this knowledge takes place when the jiva is still residing in the body knowledge cannot take place after the jiva leaves the body hence the person gets liberated only when he is alive one who is liberated when alive is known as jivan mukta the jivan mukta continues to live even after liberation on account of his prarabdha karma the set of karmas that begins to fructify the moment the physical body is conceived is called the prarabdha karma any karma which has already begun has to run its full course and therefore the prarabdha karma which has already begun has to run its full course the jiva therefore has to live and experience his prarabdha karma he departs from the par- he departs from the body only after he undergoes the full course of his prarabdha karma and not an instant before that any further karma that the jivan mukta does after liberation however is like a burnt seed it cannot generate results such as punya and pap when knowledge takes place the jivatva vanishes and what remains behind is the atman which is brahman the instant the jivatva disappears the individual's punya and pap account gets closed because there is no more jiva in whose account the punya and pap can be held discretion kaushala skill in action is only with reference to choices involved for action there is no discretion for giving up activity altogether for a karma yogi for that matter for anyone not even for a gyani no one can give up action or totally and yet live in this world samatva is the evenness of mind it is the capacity to be able to treat the opposites alike where samatva is with reference to the results of actions kaushala is with reference to actions themselves kaushala is your capacity to interpret correctly what is your dharma this capacity to interpret properly with reference to one's dharma is a discretion the skill there is a particular order in creation which is sensed commonly and this order dharma is the very basis upon which we are supposed to interact with our fellow beings dharma plays an important role in the choice of action for the karma yogi proper in it proper interpretation of dharma is what is meant by kaushala kaushala is yoga because when you exercise your discretion to choose a particular action you also choose at the same time to keep your raga dveshas away given a situation any person with discrimination would be able to intuitively know what is dharma and what is adharma this may be called common sense dharma the person who is able to interpret what is to be done in any given situation at a given time and place in terms of dharma has kaushala no product is separate from the material of which it is made the chain cannot be separate from the gold from which it is made therefore the creation is not separate from the creator who is both its efficient cause as well as its material cause the law of dharma being part of the creation is also non separate from ishvara the its creator thus dharma is considered ishvar by the karma yogi when one looks upon dharma as a lord one worships the lord by doing what is to be done at any given time and place if you do what you should do you are in harmony with ishvar this is the law of dharma that governs all karma which is yoga karma sukaushalam recognizing this truth you become a karma yogi this attitude results in antakarna shuddhi karma jam buddhi yukta hi phalan tyaktva manishinah janma bandha vidir mukta padam gachanti namayam the wise karma yogis renouncing the fruits of actions and becoming free from the shackles of birth attain the state which is free from affliction